Hey, welcome viewers. This is Sandeep Nath. Welcome back to the Renewalism Show. We are on the ninth episode today, having a wonderful uh, array of guests every day. And today I'm joined by an expert in the subject of time. So if you've been struggling with time, now today you've got a time investment strategist. Why is time important? Well, according to the book Renewal, which you see on my side, that's one of the habits that we've got to cultivate about tidying up time. Because when we when we can clean up time, we can have a lot more of it. So we've been discussing the concept of renewal and renewalism at various levels every day through our guests. But for those of you who are joining in today, let me just uh, take you through a runner at the bottom of your screen where you will see what is renewalism. And uh, the book is uh, available at renewalism.com. So you could go grab a copy. Renewalism is actually a concept which uh, could far surpass the popularity of things like veganism as well, because it doesn't have to do with the people outside like animals. It has to do with the person inside like yourself. It's got to do with your mind, body, spirit alignment, that self renewal with your renewal uh, symbiotically with others and with the environment which is what has been forced upon us with the COVID crisis. So we have uh, started doing things that make us more introspective of ourselves, as well as, uh, you know, by, by doing things uh, differently, we are getting the planet to revive itself. But why should that be forced upon us? Why can't it be done by us voluntarily? That's the question that uh, renewal has solutions for. And the third set of habits. So these are habits that you would cultivate, like tidying up time. The third set of habits has to do with systemic, the way we operate, the way we uh, use um, our world, you know, like telecommuting is one of the things that we discussed just a couple of days ago. Yesterday, we discussed about uh, solar technologies and how energy is not there forever. So you have a role to play in um, ensuring that you use it judiciously. You have a role to play in every habit, uh, viewers, and uh, so nice to see you joining in. Today, we're going to discuss the role you have to play with your time. Now, I'm going to read this uh, habit out from the book because uh, it's it's to be understood uh, verbatim. He says, OK, who says Guru Pranachandra is the one who's actually, in a sense, authored this book. He is, does not exist. He's an energy form. He was channeled to me. I was the medium and I was writing this in December last year, way before the Corona crisis. And it just so happened that the habits that he talked of are so very relevant, whether or not the Corona is there. The Corona has just proved to us that they are very relevant. He says, tidy up time and maintain it because the time does not exist. Time is a figment of our imagination. Time was there before you. Time will remain after you. It is outside you. And if something is outside you and does not even know that you exist, what are you going to do about managing it? What you can manage is what's inside you. And that's what he talks about and how we um, lose sight of that and how we must not. So I'm going to bring on Brigadier Sushil Basin. He's a veteran from the army. He knows the value of every second. And uh, he's, in fact, the author of the book, The Million Dollar Second. He will tell us about time. And I was having a discussion with him earlier on today where I learned that for what Guru Pranachandra says, he actually has a formula. Brigadier Basin, good to see you here. I'm going to remove the book from between us. So we have all of your face and we have your opening remarks on this subject, sir. Thank you very much, Sandeep. It's such a great honor to be here with you today. And uh, I'm very grateful Delighted. to you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Totally delighted. Same here. Same, same, here. Here. same here. So uh, the question uh, I wanted to you to start with was your formula, because uh, that was something that was a very, very interesting nugget I got just uh, today from you. And uh, mm -hmm. Uh, we'd like to know. So, you know, uh, when we talk of productivity and uh, uh, I have a formula uh, which has also been given to me by Neeraj Shah. Neeraj Shah is uh, one of my very good friends and he's a coach. And uh, the formula is 
FE. FE is a product of focus and energy. So FE into T, which is time, is productivity. Now, time is constant. So therefore, if you want productivity, the only thing you can really do well about is your focus on whatever you're doing and the, and the multiplication or the product of uh, and, uh, sorry, uh, of your emotions uh, and your energy. Now, energy would be physical, mental, emotional, and even spiritual. Same thing, Tony Robbins says in another way, he says, where focus goes, energy flows, right? right. So focus right. and energy is actually going to give you productivity, whereas time is constant, you can do nothing about it. And that's why, you know, the heading here is time management is dead. You can't manage time. How can you manage time? Time is fixed. You can't manage it. What you can manage is yourself. You can manage your life. And um, I'm very, very happy to uh, read your book, which is, I think, fantastic. Sandeep, I think you've done a great job. And um, I'm uh, a very, I resonate with everything is written there because I believe in that. And uh, therefore, uh, when I talk about my time investment strategies, I don't use the word management much because the moment you use the word management, you know, what are managers doing? Managers went by SOPs, templates, rules. Time doesn't allow all that. Time doesn't right. allow. Uh, you had planned something, your SOPs had something, you had set goals for, uh, let's say, June, 90, uh, June 2020 goals, which you had. They're all gone into the out of the window. You got to set new goals. So right. therefore, <laughs> invest your time, invest your time, invest your energy. And today, the situation demands that you that you manage your life on the fly because there's no time to get down to to-do lists and uh, Eisenhower model of urgency and importance. There's no time for that. Awesome, awesome. You know, actually, given the fact that there's so many time management gurus around there, I had expected that we would uh, have a little bit of a controversy on this talk, but we seem to be in complete alignment. However, uh, that yeah. you have touched upon this point, I'm, I'm going to needle you on it. You know, uh, Guru Pranachandra and I, from my experience as well, we, we would advocate that this to-do list is a method of prioritizing one's time. Uh, and and that, that does add to productivity. But you just struck it off uh, like to-do lists don't work. Why would that be? No, no, no. I said they don't work in that manner that they were said. So I'll explain that. I'll explain that. See, uh, when I say time management is dead, digital disruption killed it. I, and I, uh, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, if I wrote a letter in any city, let's say in Mumbai, I used to get a reply in 10 days. So I could plan things. I made my to-do list and everything worked very well. But today I get a WhatsApp message and I'm expected to reply in five minutes. My reaction is very limited. Okay, now I've got, I've got a very important engagement with you. I'm doing a Facebook Live audience is waiting and everything is so important but let's assume for a minute that at that at 8 30 somebody had called me and said that you wanted to meet the ceo of that company he's available only for the next half an hour of course today we are in uh, lockdown but let's say otherwise can you meet him in bkc and this is the ceo i've been wanting to meet for two years and i couldn't meet him I would probably say, Sandeep, I'm sorry, I can't go, I'll go there. So where do I manage my time? Or where do I manage my commitments? Everything has become fluid. Today, I manage my time or manage my schedule, I'll say, when I'm sitting in the car. When there's a traffic jam, <laughs> I know what to do. So the point I'm trying to make is, we don't have the luxury. That time, I'm talking of, of uh, you know, uh, yester years. You had the luxury of putting on your schedule in a way that you could implement it. So hmm. I have, a, um, you know, uh, there is a study which says that 83% people who make to-do lists never complete them. And I'm okay. firmly of the belief that the 17 remaining percent tell lies. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 
then there's another thing to that. Uh, there's another thing about to-do lists, and very interestingly, when you make mm-hmm. a to-do list, tell me how many people ever get to, uh, really speaking, uh, do a time check. I call it a time check. Some people call it a time audit. Okay. If I write down 20 things that I'll do this, these 20 things I must do tomorrow. When did I actually validate that this is the time each thing requires? So this thing requires two hours, this thing requires one hour. And then I add up and I find that that requires 28 hours. I obviously can't finish that to-do list. But because we don't do that, we get frustrated and we can't do it. Uh, you know, don't, the to-do list never gets completed. There's another factor. And that factor is beautifully brought in by Rory Vaden. He says, what is prioritization? You have only only been able to shift that you have to do this job. Now you'll do it tomorrow. But you have not changed anything because you're still going to do it. So he has a beautiful, very beautiful. I'm so convinced by that. He has something called a focus funnel. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, and he uses a term called procrastinate on purpose. So the the focus funnel says, you read that. So first you put all your tasks and see how many of them can be eliminated. First uh, examine that do they really require to be done? And if, okay, so they pass that test, so you have to do it. Then the next thing is, can you delegate it? If you can, please delegate, don't do it yourself. You can't delegate it, then can you automate it? And if you can't automate it, then do it. And if you have to do it, then you say, has it to be done now or can it wait? And if it can be wait, you put it into that funnel again. And when it comes time, you see that. And he says, by now, the relevance of that thing could have been so it's either eliminated or you find somebody now whom you can delegate it to, which you didn't have earlier or whatever. Right. So that means if you follow this, the real sh- the prioritizing that we normally do by saying most important, most urgent and all uh, is actually, I find this filter better. So this focus right. funnel. Right. You, so I go by that. I, I'm quite convinced by Rory Vaden's uh, concept. Right, right. No, that's that's a very dynamic funnel, and that makes a lot of sense because it also uh, keeps your focus reevaluated. Which, as per your formula, focus into energy uh, is is uh, the key right. determinant of productivity. So, yeah. uh, coming to this point about energy, you know, energy is what's inside you. Time is outside you. You can't manage it. It's fixed. The energy is. Uh, something which very few people actually understand. Now, I come from uh, being an energy master and coach, and um, therefore this uh, book kind of emanated. But uh, I'm going to read a a line here, which I want to discuss with you. He says that the number one means we have invented to waste time is to allow our vibrations to reset slowly. Now, you know, our vibrations are what uh, manifest our energy manifests as it, it is uh, those emotions that you had mentioned it is uh, both at the emotional level as well as the spiritual level as well as the mental level for that matter so yes this this resetting of vibration about certain angers or certain fears or certain uh, uh, feelings of guilt and shame can actually suck up 20 30 years where we concern ourselves with 20, 30 minutes and sometimes 20, 30 seconds. How do you look at this paradox and how do you respond to this line? Because in my mind, this is what energy is, your vibration. And if you allow it to reset slowly, then that's the number one waste of time. So, you know, uh, it is quite a quite a coincidence and I don't know how things happen in life that um, you sent this book to me yesterday and I only happened to read it just about 15 minutes back. And the first line that caught my fancy was this. And I really find it's very, very prudent. It's uh, so profound because I think that's so true that when, you know, uh, and I, I related to many things in my own life that just an emotion, one emotion that this man has been bad to me. It has yeah. taken me years of my life. And what you rightly said that we would be worried about, ki, oh, today I saw this movie and I wasted my time, which yeah. is really speaking ridiculously I- uh, irrelevant. But we have spent years on or months or whatever uh, hmm. in 
were fighting things that we couldn't even battle with. Okay, and we we never went to the root of. So I'll tell you, in my life, I had certain uh, incidents where something was killing me inside as to why that person did what he did. And one day I thought, said to myself, "There's no solution. Why can't I go and talk to him?" And when right. I went and talked to him, and I said, "See, I'm very upset that you said this to me, or you said this to so and so." And when we got discussing, I realized that there was just a misperception of the whole thing. We were both, we were both implementing our perceptions, and none of them were realities. So you know True. what we think is real, what we think is real. Most of the cases is a perception, and when we imagine or and we go by that perception to be real, and then start doing everything based on that, our decisions go haywire. True, and that True. is what I think we have to really. So today, uh, I'll tell you, I become so good at it that if there's anything which is going to cause a emotional gap, I'll rather come to you. and say sandeep i heard that you said this did you say it and it gets resolved much better than my telling a third person you look at sandeep he said this it doesn't solve a purpose true 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 no, true uh, i i have heard some beautiful words by gor gopal das who says similarly that there's a circle of influence there's a circle of uh, power why are you even bothered about something which is not in your circle of influence Right. however i may i can cry i can yell that the bombay traffic is bad look at this i can travel can i do anything about it so if i can't do anything about it and if i tell you sandeep look at this traffic is so bad what can sandeep do about it i better tell somebody who can do something about it so i think you're right. very right very very right and this line is very i'm i mean i'm telling you i'm going to tomorrow paste it in my on my wall in front because it has sent me a very strong message and in fact on um, on saturday incidentally i have a webinar on the same subject and oh. i think you have given me a food for thought to add this in this and you told me you'll see me quoting this uh, line because um, i have realized that the, it has got a relationship to many more things that i say about time uh, it has actually reinforced a lot of things so thank you very much for that Well, thank you so much. And uh, as you continue to read the book, because from what you were telling me, uh, a lot of uh, the these aspects about uh, you know what what we put out to the world and how we solve relationship uh, stress and uh, uh, how we uh, you know resolve uh, conflict and crises are uh, aspects that have been covered in the self renewal section. because it's it's about renewing yourself from the inside that's a starting point for uh, addressing the outside and uh, i i i really look forward to other points of feedback that you uh, have on this uh, in the coming days meanwhile while we are with our viewers we have um, a point here uh, on your perceptions you know that's another uh, subject that uh, renewal goes into details about and she says that 100% of our experience is only perceptions that's why it is imperative to purify our perceptions or at least not to be misguided by them we are the magicians that must not be tricked by our own tricks <laughs> i'm going to display it it is a long one so that i should <laughs> read it out yeah <laughs> so yeah that's a very nice uh, one yeah yeah awesome thought there so sir uh there's another aspect of time which is about wasting time you know uh while resetting our vibrations would take uh, a reading of the book to get one's head around and uh, understanding a lot of people in the audience where guru pranachandra was giving this uh, lecture had thought that today's gadgets are a big waste of time you know especially uh, uh the, the the kind of uh, time sucks like candy crush and whatever so uh, i wouldn't say gadgets but games and apps and things like that uh whereas uh, guru pranachandra had a very interesting uh, take on that i would like to know what's your take on that oh Where i just read that, that very very quickly i read about the immigrants and the natives that he's talking about and uh, <laughs> <I was thinking. laughs> oh it is uh, so uh, i think it's very right um 
uh, what you know it's again our perception uh, what we i what i think is a waste of time uh, is actually giving them a lot of uh, thrills and probably they are also gaining out of it which i can't see because my mind refuses to believe that this game can actually be doing good to them so today i have a grandson who's just a little over a year young i don't say old because i i say how can uh, you know uh, i i call myself 70 years young 69 years young okay really? so how can you be old <laughs> right really? so he um, he just about one and he's so you know i find that his intelligence level is so high when he's work he wants a phone all the time getting addicted to it is bad but using it is not bad and uh, and then waste of time also is my own perception and i think it's important what i actually even in my book million dollars second i've said it and i say it always talk about the time that you think you wasted not others what they are telling you when i tell myself that oh i wasted my time which means which means you didn't get your roti out of it your return on right. time invested if i uh-huh, if i go time. Time, yeah yeah so that is my roti return on time invested we all understand return on investment which is a financial return on a financial investment but we never actually think about time which is so valuable we'll guard our money we'll put it in a locker but we allow our time to drift away without any regret and then we only regret in retrospective effect so i feel somewhere the consciousness and you know um, i have many times said that this book is not my book it is my it is my mission of life i want to create or i want to support the or you know help you know help society become a time conscious society if it can if you breathe time it goes into your dna it is it is there in your subconscious mind that you don't have to say i'm wasting time it should be what return did i get i slept for one hour how oh, i really required it it was very essential so i didn't waste my time if i saw a good movie i needed to go it's not wasted of time but supposing i go and uh, have a uh, i go for a cup of tea with a friend of mine you know in a restaurant and i come back and my wife says how was the day i said it was very good we really enjoyed kya kiya kya kiya kuch nahi gap mara we had we remembered our good old days we remembered our school tricks we had good time did you enjoy your your energy levels went up positivity went up and all that oh. but you didn't achieve anything as such but the same person if i to ask him how are you and he says you know life is so bad life is so bad bmc is so bad traffic is so bad pollution is so bad I say yeah stop it yaar too much and when i come home and my wife says how was the day horrible well, now i have actually got zero return out of that time because that time gave me so much of negativity that is not only that i lost that one hour of my life there i lost even another hour to come out of that negativity okay so it's a very low roti and while you're talking that you know uh, i have a very good friend called michael podolinsky and he is a time uh, you know he's a productivity guru of uh, a- uh, asia he has you know when i was i had an interview with him which is there on my youtube channel and a very very nice interview i had with him because he's a productivity guru and i said i am look, doing time and you're doing productivity let's have a little chat on that so when i asked him what is your take on time and he said something very profound uh, and again there's another video on that on my t- channel saying time is life that's life. a simple definition of time time is life when i i don't say spend i say invest i invest half an hour with you i have invested half an hour of my life with you what better gift can you give to what, what better gift can you give to somebody than your time because that you're not given to anyone else out of the whole world i'm giving you half an hour now so if i'm giving you half an hour i've given you half an hour of my life you've given me your half an hour of my life do we respect that that's so and, critical absolutely so so i think uh, sandeep uh, you know when when these thoughts happen they happen in a sequence you know another thing i get <laughs> like this and which triggers off another emotion 
see uh, sometimes i've been doing this exercise in my uh, in my uh, talks on the stage so i i just explain what i did once so i made everyone uh, stand up and sit down stand up sit down and then i said breathe okay so we'll do a little exercise breathe in and hold and breathe out we did it twice then i asked somebody what were we doing just now he said breathing were you breathing before that <laughs> <or> doing <laughs> i said before yes. the exercise were you breathing he said yes i said but we never talked about it because we didn't go in the morning and say hello good morning how are you breathing today or or are you breathing well we don't ask that we only realize the value of breath when we are suffocated or or you are getting a breath and you are in you know uh, you are drowning or you are suffocated for something that is the time you say i am not getting my breath and something so vital that the, the moment you stop having it you are not there you are dead even that we don't talk about similarly time we don't talk about but it is the essence of our life and if we understand that and you know we start being consciously in fact subconsciously it should be in your mind that i am wasting time or i am productively using time as i said in your own perception i think you are doing a great job because then you will not invest your time into anything that is not giving you results and the results are not monetary the results are your satisfaction your happiness whatever true your energy that will that will go up and i energy. think that sums up that sums up uh, why tidying up time is so very critical and i think that uh, our oti roti is something that we've got our viewers to chew on now because uh, that that's that's so beautiful your life is your roti and use it well chew on that thought viewers while uh, we take leave of you for today thank you so much brigadier for joining us uh, today and sharing those concepts and uh, thank you thank you I'd very like much to, i'd like to invite all of you back tomorrow 9 pm same page we're going to be joined by a lady from california who's going to talk to us about veganism and diets and as you see in the runner uh, and i had uh, said it in my opening remarks we hope renewalism would be a bigger movement than veganism so let's understand what that one is about and how you can use consciousness in your diet just as you used it with time so see you tomorrow and uh, take care have a great night all of you